This is a archive fire now with Bitwig and Reaper support. And yeah, I saw that on the online market for very, very cheap. So you can get this now around 100 euros. And I could not resist to get one because I think it's one of the few models on the market which have 16 pads here in a row. And as you saw, you can do really nicely drum sequencing because 16 steps is normally what you really would like to see. Yeah, let's just maybe start with the drawbacks to get them out of the way so the the pads as you might see in the video are a bit flickery it's not as bad as in in the video but also you can notice it by eyes it looks a bit strange if you have them very bright like here in in this view also the select knob is rusted but it's um, sometimes have to pull two or three turns to make it work but besides that it has a really nice OLED display also one of the few rare fully programmable displays besides that i think it's it's only the the ableton push which you can fully program as well so you can really do nice things with that and it's a big improvement because here you can see what is your channel names what are your parameter names and this is very very helpful for such a device and i think every manufacturer should have at least a, a display in its controller so what can you do with it you have as you might expect you have a transport mode so you can do your usual stuff like play or stop or record Record. stop here again you can have here the metronome can be toggled and there are two combination buttons which is also helpful to have a lot of different features hidden in uh, one button so for example you can also toggle here the ticks of the metronome so turn on the metronome also toggle uh, the ticks that can be done and uh, with play and shift you can toggle here the loop playing and with the record okay you start airing arranger recording and with shift you start you toggle here the override of the clip and with alt you create an, a new clip already for recording so quite powerful transport section also even you have only four buttons and here on the left you have the different modes so each of the four modes has a second mode so in some you have eight different modes which you can use to do different things let's start on the left so here you have a normal note sequencer pressing it again gives you a poly sequencer which means you can play chords and activate the knobs then you have two play modes so this note play view mode and the more piano style play mode here you have two drum modes so one is a drum sequencer which you already saw and the other one is here a 64 grid for for playing drum sounds and here you have here the your usual session view so you see your clips you have your scenes you can start and if you press it again you have a mix mode so here you can select the different channels which is pretty helpful and also mute different uh, tremors and also solo them um, and change their record arming state so this is also pretty nice to quickly mix or also solo or also jam along on the top we have here the four encoders and you can use them also in a alt in combination and if you use it with the alt knob you have then actually eight different values you can change you have here four settings so let's start here with the mixer so the mixer here you can change the volume of your track you can change its panorama and you have send one send two and if you 
continue with the all they have sent three, four, five, and six. So volume pan and six uh, cents are there as well. The pattern buttons always navigate through the clips, so you can always go here to the clips. And if you use it with the alt uh, button, you have the undo feature, so we can change a different state and also get rid of that. And the up one is redo again. Yeah, the end. The next mode, uh, the channel mode, makes only sense here for the drum view. To make that work, you need to have the drum sequencer selected and you should also have the channel selected. So let's go back here to the mix mode, select the drum channel and also make sure you have here that one selected as well the drum thing and then we can go here to the drum and then you see that also the selection here is working so now with the select knob you can select uh, the different sounds so this is a bass drum and then you can manipulate uh, that sound so you can change now only the volume of the bass drum also the panorama of the bass drum and also the sand so it's basically the same settings as for the track but now for the individual instruments for example you could say i want to have the hi-hat on the left and then it does it on the left so if that one is not turning up uh, always make sure you are on the right track you have the drum track selected and also have clip selected and the drum machine on the channel so this only works with the bitwig drum machine to have that view as well um, you can also solo and mute them so this one is here muting so you can turn it off and you can also use that here in combination with the alt key and then you can toggle the solo state so maybe let's have here the drum machine visible so you can see that so if I go here, you do the muting. And if you go here, you uh, know it's a shift button actually. Here you can do the soloing as well. Yeah, so much for the drum sequences. And then we have the user parameters. Uh, so user one is the device parameters. You are here in the device and you see here we are on the performance page. So you can change here the different values, low pass, high pass, for example. you always see then the parameter the knobs are touch sensitive which is very nice so if you touch them you can also see the value and the name of the parameter and change it and this is really nice with that display I really like that and the fourth one is user pages so you can simply map anything to that just select the parameter here map it turn it and you're ready to go what else do we have so we have a browser as well so let's go here we are here on a track let's go here to to the browser mode and there you see also nicely the currently selected kit and here with the select knob you can go through the different patches and also preview them and with the other knobs you can filter also eight columns again use it here in a combination with alt to get to the columns eight to seven for example here i could select here my favorites and then have it circled down and if you're done you can click the parameter uh, to confirm your selection the grid buttons normally do something to the grid for example here in the play view you can change here minor and major uh, the, so the scales and with the shift you can select here the base key and also here you can change here the layout a bit of the keys yeah and as you saw there's also something different coming up if you press the shift key there is also the shift mode so the shift mode is for having some more features one is here the, the starting part is all the configuration for the repeat mode there you select the length of the newly created clip so if you use alt and record you change the length of the clip so you could say i want two bars i want one bar i want four bars and there you can add uh, different types of tracks so instrument audio and effect tracks if you press that and let's have a look here at the beat repeat let's go where are we let's go to the uh, let's go here and then we go back to here exactly we have that one so now let's activate a note repeat which is done here on the left one And then you have here the rate. So we could speed up here to or slow down. And we have here 132s. That's a bit fast. Let's go back to 16th. And there you can have the length of the notes here in that area. So we can shorten that, for example. Let's say we want this. And it's 
then it's like this. And here you can select the range of this arpeggiator. So the octaves, these are now one, this was none. And here you can go up to eight with that one. So it's... Okay, that's very high and here let's go back to two maybe and here you can change the type of the arpeggiator so up down up then down whatever down up down then up so lots of possibilities here to change the different settings here of the note repeat how these different sequences work uh, i showed it in many videos already and it's a little bit boring to repeat that so just watch my push videos for example or launchpad videos where i show uh, these sequences the difference is now you have a much longer grid which is also quite an interesting experience especially here for playing you could even play uh, let's turn that off you could even play now with two hands Okay, not with that sound, but uh, that's you, you get the idea. Okay, we showed the drum, we showed that one, and what the detailed buttons do in a different modes. You can look up in the documentation. So the documentation is part of the download. Go to the section where the archive fire is explained, and there you can get all the different information. This is, for example, nice if you have here three mute three channels muted you can press that to unmute them all some really powerful improvisation stuff in there for example like this bang you're back in track and really really nice device uh, with that feature that you have here this six and drum this sequence and i think that's most pro argument to get this device it's actually designed for full studio as you see here and with evil studio you can use up to four devices that's something i do not support mainly because i simply have only one so if you want to send me three more i could look into that too but i'm also not sure if that really is that big of addition if you have multiple ones because if you put them together you have here you see here you have the connector so you need to leave space for the connector then you have the buttons in between so it's not really if you have just the fourth time of your sequencer it's it's and it takes up also a lot of space of your desk if you have four of these so i think one is really cool but for hmm, you know whatever so yeah, it's a cool little device, especially for the programming, the drum sequencer. And if you like it too, make some funky music.